Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Rhiannon Praetor deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of the new Praetors from the most recent Historic Anthology expansion, and one of those is Shielder to Whispering One, a 7 mana 6 6 legendary Praetor with a Swampwalk, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, giving us additional reanimation effects, and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature, so also gives us built in removal. Another one of our Praetors is Elishnorn, Grand Cenobite, a 7 mana, 4 7 legendary Praetor with Vigilance, saying other creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, and creatures your opponents control get minus 2 minus 2, so it kind of gives us a built in sweeper effect as well. Then we've got Vorinclex, a Voice of Hunger, the original Vorinclex, an 8 mana, 7 6 Praetor with Trample, saying whenever we tap a land for mana, add one mana of any type that land produced, so we can potentially hard cast some of our more expensive black, white, and red creatures and whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, so severely reduces what the opponent can do. And then last but not least, the Jin Gitaxis, the core augur, a 10 mana, 5-4 legendary praetor with flash, saying at the beginning of your end step, draw 7 cards, and each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7, so they will have to discard to no cards in hand at the end of their turn. So these are the creatures we're going to get in play and win the game with. And how are we getting there? Well, we've got a few ways to discard cards from our hand with the full play set of Faithless Looting to draw two and then discard two. Can also flash it back out of the graveyard for two in red. We've got the full play set of Thrilling Discovery, which gains us two life. Then we may discard two cards and if we do draw three cards and two copies of Cathartic Reunion, which does something very similar but doesn't gain any life. And then we've got some creatures that can mill cards in our graveyard with the full playset of Stitcher Supplier, a 1 mana 1 1 zombie, saying when it enters a battlefield or dies, mill 3 cards, and 2 copies of Mire Triton, a 2 1 zombie merfolk with Death Touch, when it enters a battlefield, we mill 2 cards and gain 2 life. And then we also have two copies of Timurit, Calls the Dead, which on the first two chapters mills three cards. Then we may exile a creature or enchantment card from our graveyard, and if we do make a 2-2 black zombie creature token, usually don't want to exile our Praetors, but if we mill a Stitcher Supplier or Mire Triton, we might be okay making a zombie token, since that'll be necessary to potentially cast our Blood for Bones. And then on the final chapter, we gain X life and Scry X, where X is the number of zombies we control, so it also synergizes with Supplier and Mire Triton. And then, of course, we need to reanimate our creatures somehow, and that's where Blood for Bones and Unburial Rites come in handy. Blood for Bones, a 4-mana sorcery. As an additional cost to cast it, we need to sacrifice a creature, so we still need our Mire Triton, Supplier, or Zombie token to sacrifice. And then we return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and another creature card from our graveyard to our hand. And typically we want to keep our Praetors in the graveyard, but we're happy getting back a Stitcher Supplier or Mire Triton to put additional cards in our graveyard. And then we also have the full play set of Unburial Rites, the 5 mana sorcery that can be flashed back out of the graveyard for a 3 and a white, so we can often discard it and then cast it out of the graveyard for a discount to return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. So this deck can usually reanimate one of our Praetors on turn 4. Reanimating a Shielded, of course, helps us get our other creatures in play as well. But we can potentially get there on turn 3 if we get one of our Phyrexian Towers in play, which is a legendary land that taps for Colos, or we can sacrifice a creature and add a double black, so if we get an early Stitcher Supplier or Mire Triton in play, we can potentially sacrifice those to Phyrexian Tower to generate one additional mana, so we can reanimate one of our creatures on turn 3. And then the rest of the mana base includes one basic land in case the opponent messes with our mana base somehow and we need to fetch up a basic. And then we've got a bunch of shock lands with four copies of Godless Shrine, four Blood Crypts and two copies of Sacred Foundry, a couple of the fast lands from Kaladesh with two Inspiring Vantage and two Concealed Courtyard, three Clifftop Retreat which comes into play untapped if we control a mountain or plains including our dual lands here, and then two copies of Blindstep Pathway as another untapped black or red source since those are the one drops we have in the deck. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Supplier and Triton to fill the graveyard. And then Rites, which we can discard to Discovery to reanimate on turn 4. So we're just looking for some Praetors to reanimate here. Faithless Looting can be flashed back. As we see, turn on Satyr's Cunning, so it might be a Transmogrify deck. 
I think I want to make sure we hit our land drops, and I'm actively interested in discarding rights and foreign clicks anyway. So let's discovery. Next turn we can play Concealed Courtyard. And then set up our Blood for Bones. Alright, Intangible Virtues, it's a red-white tokens deck. Could still be a Transmogrify deck. Do I jump with Supplier? We will need a target for Blood for Bones, but we'll have Mar Triton as well, so... Don't actually mind putting some more cards in Graveyard, plus we still have Unburial Rites as a second reanimation effect. Shieldred's nice too, so we could flashback looting next turn and go for rights on Shieldred. And then... Probably fine to discard another rights. Alright. Turn for Unburial Rites on either Shieldred or Foreign Clex, probably gonna be Shieldred. It's going to be hard for the opponent to beat unless they've got some graveyard hit or their own powerful turn involving Transmogrify. Soul Warden is not going to cut it. And erase the alarm. Opponent up to 22. And it's go time. Bring back Shieldred for starters. Opponent has to sacrifice a creature. Next turn we bring back Vorinclex. They might have an exile based removal spell, which prevents us from reanimating Shieldred a second time. Young Pyromancer does do a good job of mitigating the effectiveness of Shieldred's sacrifice effect. And our opponent is going to attack. We'll block one of these. And bring back Foreign Clex. Phyrexian Tower could also be nice. So... Start with a Mar Triton, see what we mill. And Foreign Clex also makes double mana now. So still nothing too exciting to reanimate. So let's Triton again. Ooh. That one I don't mind bringing back. Let's do it now. Bring back Shin Gitaxius. And then Frexian Tower can potentially sacrifice one of our creatures in response to an exile effect. So we get to draw a bunch, discard to hand size. So now the main concern is winning the game before we end up decking. But I think we'll manage. Since at some point we'll find an Elish Norn, which we can just hard cast now. So our opponent has to empty their hand, or we'll do it for them. Satyr's Cunning escapes. And yeah, opponent's not gonna get to untap their lanes. We'll find an Elish Nord eventually, wipe the opponent's board and attack for the win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to we can Reunion. Discarding Shieldred, Engine, Gitaxius, hopefully finding a creature to sacrifice to our Blood for Bones. Facing a tapped Isolated Chapel. Right, Discovery can keep on churning through the deck. And then we want to keep black mana available after we cast Discovery in case we draw a Stitcher Supplier so we can still cast it afterwards. Stomping Ground untapped, not sure what that represents. But we'll keep on discarding. Alright, perfect. So next turn we can... Cast our Blood for Bones, assuming Supplier survives, although it could get stomped here. I see Grizzly Salvage, end of turn. It's gonna mill five cards. Another card that's a potential consideration in these Reanimator decks. And we see Crater Hoof Behemoth, Platinum Angel go to the graveyard. We can potentially get rid of a Platinum Angel with Shieldred's Sacrifice ability. 
So what creature do we get back first here if we get to untap? Shield roots might be the most effective. Although if our opponent has their own shield roots, we see a rise of the dark realms as well. So if our opponent has a Mystic's Mastery, they can cast a rise next turn. And there's not much I can do to stop that. Yeah, we can attack for one, reanimate a creature. And then... What's our best option between Shieldred and Jin Gitaxius? Drawing a few cards would be nice. If we get Shieldred and the opponent reanimates their own Shieldreds, I guess we still get to reanimate something so we can bring back uh, different Shieldreds. Although, which one resolves first? Active player, non active player, non active resolves first. So we would have to sacrifice before we bring back a creature, so I can still bring back a second Shieldred. And sacrifice the original one. Making the opponent discard a bunch could be useful if they don't have a Mystic's Mastery next turn. So maybe that's the play, just hope that they can combo off next turn and then we make them discard their entire hands. And then we'll put back Stitcher Supplier in our hands. So we get to draw 7, and then discard, I guess, Unburial Rites makes it one cheaper. Foreign Clex, maybe want to keep a Shieldred in hand to hard casts. And some lands we don't need. Something like this. Alright, let's see if they have the Mystic's Mastery for Rise of the Dark Realms. If not, their hand will be gone. Alright, just another Grizzly Salvage, so we might have done it here. Of course, they could still discard an Unburial Rites and then cast that out of the graveyard. But that's going to make things a lot more challenging. Stitcher Supplier, mills three more cards, see a Massacre Worm as well, similar to Elishnorn. So it's possible they had the Mystic's Mastery in hand but just didn't have a fourth land yet, which the Grizzly Salvage was able to find. Or it was a tapped land. Alright, they didn't have Mystic's Mastery, just two more Rise of the Dark Realms in hand, and no Burial Rites, so our opponent's pretty much on empty here. And then in the meantime, we can hit for five. Since we do need to get the game over with. All right, didn't mill an Unburial Rites, luckily. And then bring back our Foreign Clicks. And then do I play Supplier? Milling three cards is kind of risky with our uh, draw seven each turn. So maybe I'm better off just not doing it. Although I guess on the other hand we do want to find another reanimation effect. Alright, I'll play one more supply route. Could play a second thanks to the mana from Vorinclex, but we did mill and burial rights, which was kind of our goal here. So I'll settle for the one supplier. And then we go to discard a bunch. Some lands, suppliers can go, thrilling discoveries not needed. So our opponent needs to draw Mizzix Mastery exactly this turn. Otherwise it's probably game over. Since we can reanimate Elishnorn to pump the team. And Vorinclex will further tax their mana. They found the Unburial Rites, but one mana short of casting it. And time to rise Elishnorn. Norn. 
and attack for the win. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Sadly, without the red mana, this hand's not really keepable. This is much better. And then we don't have a discard outlet yet. Typically, Shieldra's going to be more valuable than Elishnorn. In case we do pick up a discard outlet. Turn one, crash through. And then we'll play a Stitcher Supplier. Mill the Faithless Looting, which we can flash back on three. Don't have a turn two play lined up. Opponent a blue red spells deck with Sprite Dragon, maybe Arclight Phoenix as well. Alright, so we'll just preserve our life total here, play tap lands. Don't expect any haste creatures on the ground, so might as well hit for one. And then next turn go vantage into looting. Expressive iteration. Probably gonna find a land and a one mana spell. So Sprite Dragon can grow up to a 3-3, put us to 14. But we're still on schedule to potentially reanimate on turn 4. Although we're still, of course, looking for additional creatures to reanimate. Right, opponent passes. So, yeah, go Vantage. Attack for 1, flashback looting. And hope that the opponent doesn't kill our supplier, because... They may not want to kill it to prevent putting three cards in my graveyard, but the truth is that we need Supplier to cast our Blood for Bones. Although we did find a backup Supplier. Foreign Clex, another nice one to get back with Shieldred. So yeah, as long as they don't kill my Supplier, Blood for Bones can bring back Shieldred, make them sacrifice Pride Dragon. Assuming they don't bring back an Arclight Phoenix this turn or play another creature. This is definitely a matchup where Elish Norton would be quite useful at slowing down the opponent's clock. And Brainstorm missing its picture. But it's still gonna work as intended here. Draw three, put two cards back. And most importantly, a one mana spell for Arclight Phoenix purposes and to grow Sprite Dragon or to enable a Stormwing Entity. Alright. Now, none of our creatures have reach, but Shieldred will still force them to sacrifice one of those. Looting into Arclight Phoenix would be problematic. Just gonna be a shock on our face. Shock on Supplier would have been a lot more backbreaking, although there's also the chance we could mill a um, Unburial Rites, so. Let's go for the Blood for Boons. Supplier mills a couple more cards before we have to decide what to reanimate. Shield Red on the battlefield, Supplier in our hands. And opponent's got to get rid of one of their creatures. But yeah, we could still die to the Flyer. Thrilling Discovery can gain a bit of life. Question is whether the opponent can deal enough damage this turn to potentially burn us out. Sprite Dragon into Opts. So if they find a Shock, we're dead. Or any one mana spell, really. And a Pillar of Flame will do it. So yeah, probably a matchup we can win if we're on the play, but being on the draw here means we're just a turn behind. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got our Stitcher Splier to sacrifice the Blood for Bones. Looting to discard our two Praetors, although Inquisition's gonna mess with our plan. Although just top deck whatever they make us discard. Could have still cast a looting first. Although if they make me discard looting, we can still at least flash it back. So looting discarded, and we 
have our creature in play to sacrifice to our blood for bones, which is pretty important. Now I will need a third land. There's also an Umberial Rites waiting for us in the graveyard, so... Don't necessarily need our Stitcher Supplier to survive. Thrilling Discovery I'll take. Against a black deck, probably don't need Elishnorn too much. Alright, land is good. So next turn I could still potentially cast Umberial Rites. Opponent cycles a plum the Forbidden. So I imagine they have a uh, such more witch in their deck. Might be a black green sacrifice deck. Karn, the great creator, can find a Tormod script to exile our graveyard. My purpose is greater. So there goes that plan. Ooh, wow. Opponent does not have Tormod scripts in their sideboard and just goes for Gravedigger's Cage. Yeah, that's going to be too slow here. So we can Unburial Rites, and on this board I kind of like our Blue Praetor. Attack Karn. Yeah, what a difference one mana can make. So what do we discard? Could potentially hardcast Elishnorn, I guess Blood for Bones, not incredibly useful. And... Uh, Sure, a land can go. And... Cathartic, Elishnorn. Looks good. There's a cage. And they have an answer for the Praetor. Karn can minus. Get one last card. But Timurt calls it that, making zombies could still be quite effective. So Cage does stop our blood for bones. So yeah, Timurt calls it dead, plus... I guess I could play a second Timurt calls it dead with Phyrexian Tower. Try and pressure their life total to punish the life loss from Bolas' Citadel. Although Cage also stops the opponent from using the Bolas' Citadel, so that's a bit of a nombo. Either way, we'll attack for one. And then doesn't matter too much what we exile at this point. Next turn I could technically hard cast Elishnorn, so maybe regretting discarding one of them. Thought is gonna have a look. Our hand's quite redundant. Takes Discovery. Don't have too many cards left in Library, but I think we'll still manage here. Alright. What we can still do is Blood for Bones to get back a creature from the graveyard into our hand. And then cast it next turn, so that's still a play we could make. Opponent takes four. And then... Yeah, I don't mind Unburial Rites. And then we can still play Mar Triton as well. So whatever I select here is not going to work, but I can put, let's say, Elishnorn in our hands. And then next turn we can cast her. So opponent can play Citadel, but they can't combo off because of their own Grafdigger's Cage. And then... Get to gain a bunch of life, scry, shieldred, we can also hard cast. Doesn't matter too much here.
and then hard cast Elishnorn. Have to sacrifice a creature since Vantage comes into play tapped. Kills Apprentice, attack for 12. So yeah, this game would have looked a lot different if the opponent had a Tormod script instead of Gravedigger's Cage in the sideboard, but maybe the change to 7 cards in sideboard only made them uh, choose for Cage, but definitely worked out in our favor. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Looting into Reunion into Timurt Calls the Dead. Opponent also with a turn 1 Faithless Looting of Basic Mountain. Discards Rites and Anger, so another reanimation deck. Shieldred times 2 can be discarded. So it's probably a good time to be playing Relic of Progenitus with all the discard decks running around in Historic right now. Another new addition from the Anthology expansion that can slot into pretty much any deck. Do I want a Looting or Cathartic Reunion? Let's Cathartic Reunion to be mana efficient. Although... I don't really have two cards I actively want to discard is the problem. Since we don't have another reanimation effect yet, and Timurt calls it that sets up Blood for Bones, as we'll have something to sacrifice. So I could also reunion discarding looting, since I don't really need more draw discard effects. And then we'll probably draw another land. Sure. Alright, so next turn I can play Courtyard into a Timurt Calls the Dead. Or we could play Double Supplier, which gives me a more immediate filling of the graveyard to set up our Blood for Bones. Because then when we sacrifice a Stitcher Supplier, we will mill three more cards. So that seems slightly better. In the meantime, our opponent discarded Elishnorn, so I guess if they play Elishnorn and kill our suppliers, we won't have a target for Blood for Bones, although same story with Timurt Calls the Dead. So we just have to hope they mill over an Unburial Rite, so we can cast Unburial Rites from the graveyard. So we get six more shots at finding Unburial Rites, assuming they bring back Elishnorn here. And there's the Unburial Rites. And we should have a Shieldred waiting for us. And that's gonna make them sacrifice Elishnorn. And slowly bring back more creatures from our graveyard. Starting with... Uh, Jin Gitaxius, I guess. Five mana, they could hard cast Unburial Rites. Or a Bond of Revival. Take four. Yeah, Shieldred is going to win this battle against the Elishnorn, that's for sure. If I play Timurt Calls the Dead, zombies die instantly to Elishnorn. Guess we can flashback looting, fill the graveyard with foreign clicks. Our own Elishnorn can offset the opponent's Elishnorn, although this one's going to die soon. Alright, eh, seems good enough. We do have Swamp Walk, opponent does have a Swamp, so we can attack. Draw 7. Discard some more creatures that we cannot cast, some lands. Elish Norn is gone, creatures grow again, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a very nice opening hand. Turn one supplier, turn two discovery, and supplier can be sacrificed to our blood for bones. So hoping to mill some of our praetors. No praetors so far. A Radiant Fountain, so opponent maybe a colorless ramp deck. So certainly interested in discarding Umburial Rites. And then we probably don't need Blood for Bones as much. 
Could also discard looting since we can always flash it back. And then Blood for Bones sacrificing supplier can mill three more cards, which could be valuable. maybe a black ramp deck stitcher suppliers interesting so we would have been able to play it alongside a one mana looting had we not discarded it but happy enough in doing this and these two can go all right gotta hope our opponent doesn't have any graveyard hates like relic of progenitus or karn into torment script hedron archive is acceptable and a Guardian Idol. Alright, so... Opponent does have... Let's see... Potentially 8 mana next turn to cast Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Although 3 damage not enough to kill this, and the minus ability also not enough to get rid of it, so... Reanimating Jingitaxia still seems like... A pretty strong move. We'll draw 7 cards instantly. And then... Probably use Imburial Rites... All right, opponent already concedes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Plenty of ways to draw and discard and a supplier to fill the graveyard. Kick things off with probably Godless Shrine. So I can potentially Thrilling Discovery on turn two. Also most likely gonna Reunion. Thoughtseize, not very effective here. Takes one of our reunions. Timurt calls it dead, it's nice. So if I reunion, I do want to keep a third land and Timurt calls it dead, so that's going to be difficult. So we could also looting, even though it's card disadvantage. Nah, I guess we'll discard our Timurt calls it dead and looting, and then we can just flashback looting on three anyways. So we still use our mana effectively. Alright, so next turn we can flashback looting, discard double rights, or rights plus one of our praetors, which we hopefully draw. Our opponent's going to need some graveyard hate. Since on burial rights we can just play out of the graveyard. Gilded Goose into Blood Crypt, so maybe a Junt Sacrifice deck. And a looting of their own. Opponent discards Triton and another Goose. Picked up Vorinclex, so can discard that alongside one of our Imperial Rites. Alright, so Vorinclex is incoming. Not the best one to reanimate here, but still pretty good. Blood for Bones can eventually sacrifice Supplier, maybe mill another Praetor. Grizzly Salvage, alright, so points also reanimating here. As we see, Elishnorn. Could be a reason to Blood for Bones now before they kill Stitcher Supplier with Elishnorn, which I don't mind. Although keeping Supplier's Insurance in case of a Shieldred, although they're unlikely to reanimate Shieldred next turn since she's not in the graveyard yet. So sure, let's Blood for Bones. And we can bring back our own Shieldred now, which seems slightly better than Vorinclex. And then Supplier in hand. Shieldred will make them sacrifice the goose. Swampwalk also relevant against the Blood Crypt and Triome. Opponent just flashes back looting. Shieldred brings back Vorinclex, so they've got one more turn to potentially cast a spell before their lands will be tapped. And we get to keep comboing with Supplier. Jingitaxius can potentially be reanimated if we discard it to looting. Second Elishnorn. So 
So step one, supplier. And also have double mana here, thanks to Vorinclex, so certainly comes in handy. So we'll flashback looting. And then we can still on burial rights. Pretty strong turn. Gotta hope to dodge a sweeper, I suppose. Although we'll still draw seven cards at least. A lightning axe. Alright, that deals with our Praetor. Does keep the opponent's land tamped down. Lightning Axe also nice. Discard outlets. Ooh, sacrificing a food token with a Vorinclex in play. Doesn't feel great, and our opponent's dead on board anyway, unless they've got some more interaction. Alright, sweet. So yeah, overall we faced off against a few other reanimation decks, but so far haven't seen anything that seems to be working better than what we've got going on. Although there's certainly a lot of approaches to reanimator decks now with all these new tools, including Grizzly Salvage, can certainly go down the path of Mystic's Mastery with some powerful instants and sorceries. And uh, of course, could also try and add a bit more interaction, like maybe your own anti-graveyard cards or some hand disruption or removal. But the more interaction you add to the deck, the more you dilute the reanimation game plan and the less consistent the deck will become. So it's always a balancing act. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.